um, had a chance to come here um, in 2006, um, right out of high school. Okay. Um, so first of my family, like between my parents, um, to actually go to college and graduate. So I graduated in four years, and basically, um, the key to the graduation was because of me um, getting a mentor. Mm -hmm. um, it started off with an organization called Real Life One Hundred and One, mm -hmm. the National Mentor and Scholarship Program for African American Males. Um, it was just locally here in Detroit during that time, but now it's a national program. And basically, um, the program just saved my life, man. Um, I was able to be exposed to men who were like businessmen, doctors, lawyers, right. very successful They look men. like you. Yeah. Right. Um, things I never saw growing up in Detroit, like the true inner city of Detroit, the um, Joe Road, Illinois area. So it was unique. Mm -hmm. um, I just did a speech um, this past June. And um, like on my ID, you'll see 48204. Right, right, right. But that was ranked as the most dangerous um, um, zip code right, in a country. Right, right. And so just to make it out of that area and to get to a small private institution where I felt safe and secure, um, just totally thankful, just totally thankful to God. So that was a blessing. Um, I pursued a CJ criminal justice degree. Um, graduated in four years. Um, I had a chance to intern with the U.S. Marshals, mm. the ATF, and then I interned with the um, United States Secret Service in Washington, D.C. That picture is with um, um, Michelle Obama. Had a chance to meet her, had a chance to drive in her motorcade, actually. Oh, awesome. um, so I was on track to become a federal agent. And then there was a time where I went into Wayne County um, jail cell. And I just saw all these young men that looked just like myself. Mm. Only thing, they just had like the beards and their hairline, the mm. hair was just everywhere. Right, right. And I was just like, do I really want to lock these people up? Or what if I had a chance to mentor a group of them in the community and help break this cycle? And so that's when I started thinking about mentoring. And so I, I joined Big Brothers Big Sisters while I was in college. And I was still pursuing the criminal justice route. And then um, the U.S. Marshals actually um, offered me a job offer, mm -hmm. um, a conditional job offer. And I went through the entire hiring process with the Marshals. I was waiting to go to um, the Federal Training Law Enforcement Academy down in Glencoe, Georgia. Mm -hmm. And um, they discontinued my recruitment drive. That was on March 1st. Why did it discontinue? What was the reason? Because they said it was unconstitutional for regular civilians to apply to become a U.S. Marshal um, compared to those who were in the armed forces and they had no idea about the Marshals were um, recruiting. Mm -hmm. So basically, it was like a cult. Basically, the Marshals were recruiting or putting people through something called an FCIP, Hire and Drive Federal Career Intern Program. Mm -hmm. But other people wasn't having that same opportunity. Oh, right, right, right. So they had okay. to revamp and they had to recruit openly into the public so it can be fair. And um, that was March 1st of 2011. Then I created this Bridge and Lost Gaps program, March 16th, 2011. Oh, really? 15 okay. days later. So So this is the program you created? Mm -hmm, based upon my life. And so my birthday is January 15th, um, you know, and that's the same day as Martin Luther King. So, right. so I was just like, man, if I'm going to spend my life doing something, I want to leave a legacy behind. Exactly. And so exactly. BLG, Brian Lamar George, that's my government name. And I just wanted to leave something behind that I can be remembered for. And so hopefully this is the, the avenue and everything. But... Why did I create this? It was clear as day. Low enrollment, retention, and graduation rates of African American males here at this institution. Not only at this institution, but on a national level. I mm -hmm. mean, you look at every other ethnic group and you look at the other gender group being females, African Americans are at the bottom. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, we have to change this. So what do you think helped you, like, make it what did what, what what was the factors that helped you to stay in school and graduate um it was it was really four things um it was the mentor setting expectations for me it was the mentor in the university providing the support for me to meet those expectations it was that mentor and that that comfortable environment providing assessment and feedback hey brian you're doing this right hey you are doing this wrong but then it was that engagement and involvement 
I didn't have a spring break. I was always at an intern or you know, I was doing a service trip or I was trying to help out in the community. I was engaged in the ball, so I didn't have a lot of idle time. Although I played basketball here at Aaron Rand Cross Country, I was always busy athletically. Um, this award, so 2010 Male Scholar Athlete of the Year Award. Mm. Mm. And the story behind this is I started off college with a 2.0 GPA. I had a 14 on my ACT and I graduated in Northwestern with a 2.8 overall. I carried a 4.0 on my final two years of college. Sweet, sweet. And came out as, you know, the top scholar athlete, you know. And so we got something in common. Yeah. <laughs> so when I saw that about you, I was like, wow. I remember that as a child and I always told myself I wanted to be something. And I just needed to fall in love with something, which was education I eventually fell in love with. But um, it was just the support. And you coming out here, no gunshots. Mm -hmm. um, the police is very, um, their presence is everywhere. It's a normal environment. But then living there, it's hard to function. It's hard to dream when you always have to worry or your brain still is just on that mode of survival. Right. I'm just right. trying to survive. But here you can actually thrive. You can actually exactly. be exactly. whatever you want to be. So What's up? Plus, I mean, people in the hood, their, their mindset and their mentality Way is totally different. different. You know different. what I mean? Their, 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 their goals don't exceed the borders of eight miles and Absolutely. whatever, you know what I mean? <laughs> when you come out here, you know, it seems like, I mean, I experienced the same, because even though Wayne State was, is within Detroit, mm -hmm. it's not part of Detroit, you know, because it's, it's so different. You know, it's like a whole different community and a whole different, when, when I was exposed to that, I was like, man, wow, so people live like this? <laughs> like, people do this? I mean, you know, you know, and so I'm like, man, I'm like, what have I been missing? <laughs> yeah. You know, and so I just engulfed myself into that whole environment. You know, I didn't have a mentorship program or anything like that. What drove me was my son. I mean, you know, at the time he was just born, I was a single, I was a, I was a single parent. And so he was the only thing I had to drive me. And I would often tell people when you are reaching for success, when you have a goal, you have to have a significant why. I mean, why are you doing this? Because your why is going to be connected to your passion and your passion <laughs> is, is what drives you. Okay, if, you're, if, you're, if your why is connected to something material, I mean, you're not going to wake up in the morning at 3 o'clock in the morning, you know, wake up 3 o'clock in the morning and start opening up or cracking open your textbook or open up the laptop. You know, and, but my why was very significant. I wanted a life for my son. I wanted him to live something different than I had. You know, I just wanted to, I wanted to be an example for him. And so that was my why. And that, that I mean, it, I always tell people, I'm not, I wasn't the smartest person in the class. But I will outwork the person. I will outwork too, somebody man. to death. Me too. You know, <laughs> yeah. you know, I wasn't the smartest person because I had to study. I mean, when I, I spent sixty hours literally studying, 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 and I talk about that in my book, man. It's like I studied. You know, this is just this just didn't happen that I, I was able to do this. I had to put forth effort upon effort. That's the only way I was able to, to achieve it, wow. you know? And so, I mean, it's your why has to be very important. Your why has to be significant mm -hmm. enough for you to, to be willing to die die for it. Yep. You know, a lot of people say, hey, I'm living for this, I'm living for that. But my thing is, what are you dying for? <laughs> because, I mean, each day, I mean, that, I mean, that's how I see it. When I, in my mind, I don't see it as me living a life. I'm seeing me, you know, what am I going to die for? Because eventually... You know, that's what it's leading to. Yep. And so if you realize that if you put that importance in your, in your head, that urgency is there. And so then you're, I think you'd be more willing to less, uh, you won't procrastinate as much. Or yep. you'd be more more in tune on what you're doing and Absolutely. how you're spending your time and things like that. What are you willing to die for? You know? That's huge. Yeah, so. Man, yeah. I'm preaching, man. <laughs> Absolutely. And that's, that's what I tell people, man. What are you willing to die for? You know? Yep. Seriously. Not live for, because when you say live, it's like you live in, yeah. there's no end date to that. There's no end date. So if you don't have an end date, there's no urgency. But when you say, what am I dying for, it's urgency in that. You know? It's meaning in that. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. You hit it right on point. Um, I just went to Jamaica. Um, I went on a cruise. And, um... I saw Jamaica on TV, but I really didn't know how poor they really are over there. Hmm. As Mudger said, can I have a dollar? I'm trying to get my son some shoes so he can walk to school, so he don't have to walk barefooted. And then 
I wound up giving them the flip flops off my foot and I felt bad, that's all I had on. But she's like, same thing. He can die because of his foot can get infected and from the mm. infection it can, you know, take over his body, it can become an illness. And I'm like, this kid is still willing to walk to school although death presents itself right. greatly. Right. Right. I mean, right. that is perfect. And that's what I kept telling myself. Man, I'm willing to die to become something. Exactly. And it comes to something great exactly. and it leaves something behind. And exactly. That why is huge, man. Yeah. So you exactly. are right. I mean, I heard because Will Smith, Will Smith is actually a deep guy. Yeah. Oh, you I said had that? No, I had the, the Will's wisdom. You ever mm -hmm. seen that? Yeah. And when he was like, you know, I'm willing to be. I mean, he was yep. talking about a treadmill. Yep. He was like, you might be faster, <laughs> but I'm willing to die for this. There's it's no, there's no room for Plan B because you no. know that takes away from Plan A. Mm -hmm. I'm willing to die for this. You know, I listen to that like for like twelve weeks straight every day. Like boom, boom, okay, boom. Yeah, me listen. too, man. And him and I talking about the wall and everything. Wall. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, you ain't one brick at a time. Right. And see that, and that, and that, was, and that is so true because people look at it like if I was to sit back, like man, man man, man, I have to spend four years in school <laughs> just to get a degree. But I ain't look at it like that. I look at it at class. Okay, what do I have to do right now for this one class or this one assignment? Then I just built on assignment, on assignment, on assignment. Next thing you know, that class was done. Same thing, assignment, assignment, assignment. That class was done. I didn't look at the because if you just sit back and look like, man, four years is a long time. <laughs> but if you look at it like in portions, it's more manageable. You know, way more manageable. I mean, you just perform as best as you possibly can in that one class, and that's next thing class. you know, you 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 end up graduating. And that's You're how seriously. I put it. Every syllabus, every study guide, every note, every exam, every midterm, every final. Right. Like you know. Every semester, every year. Right, right. You put those four walls together, four years, you're going to put on that graduation cap, which is that roof. Exactly, exactly. Simple Perfect as that. analogy, right, exactly. Simple as that. I used that actually in a speech I did back in 2010, mm. just like that. Mm. That's powerful. Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah, we got a lot in common. <laughs>